Let's compare these pop filters against a naked microphone to see which is best for eliminating vocal plosives. Try holding a candle or lighter a few inches in front of your face while singing or talking. You may notice that your voice makes the flames dance or even blow it out. That's because certain vocal sounds naturally push more air than others. You can also try this by talking into your hand and feeling the bursts of air leave your mouth with each word. Now, controlling these bursts of air takes practice, and that's where a pop filter comes in handy. For a lot of us, it's a must-have for vocal recording as it helps to eliminate the low-end frequency buildup during P's, B's, and the thum sound, the TH, th which can often cause issues in your recordings. Now, there are some vocalists that due to their style or their technique may not require a pop filter. However, if you find yourself dealing with plosives in your vocal recordings, here are two anti-plosive methods that you can try. The first is the enclosure method. You can use a foam sleeve to enclose the diaphragm of the microphone. This setup breaks up the air as it hits the microphone, protecting the capsule from plosives. In this video, we'll test foam of two different thicknesses. Alternatively, you could use a nylon or a metal pop filter to create a barrier between the singer and the microphone. This barrier breaks up plosives before they reach the microphone. And the key differences between these two methods is the air gap between the barrier and the microphone. Will this air gap boost performance? Let's find out. But first, a word from the sponsor of this video, DistroKid. DistroKid makes it easier than ever to get a YouTube official artist channel, which is a fantastic way for independent artists to streamline their online presence. Instead of having videos scattered across various different channels, you can put all of your music onto one centralized hub to make it easier for your fans to find and enjoy your work. And that's just one of the ways that DistroKid makes music distribution fun. They offer unlimited uploads and artists keep 100% of their royalties and earnings. So if you haven't already, you can get started with the link in the description to get 7% off your first year subscription with DistroKid and join over a million artists who use DistroKid to upload their music onto Spotify, Apple Music, and all other streaming services. Thank you to DistroKid for your continued support of the channel. Back to the video. All right, it is vocal time. Our brave vocalist, Lexine, is ready to rock. Let's get to it. Our first comparison is a P sound into a dynamic mic, an SM7B. Puh, 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 puh. The second comparison is a P sound into a condenser mic, an advanced audio 414. Puh, puh. The third comparison is a couple of P words into a dynamic mic. People, 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 pop, popsicle, pop, popsicle, pop, popsicle, pop, popsicle, pop, popsicle. And the fourth test is a couple of P words into a condenser mic. People, 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 people. People, pop, popsicle, pop, popsicle, pop, popsicle, pop, popsicle, pop, popsicle. And there you have it. A was the regular thickness foam filter. B was the metal pop filter. C is the nylon pop filter. D was the naked microphone, no filter at all. And E was the big foam filter that came with the SM7. I managed to shove it over the 414 as well. We did one final test here, playing with the distance of the pop filter from the microphone to see how much of an impact that made. And the results were pretty interesting. I did one with the pop filter touching the microphone and then at one inch, and then we moved it away to six inches. Puh, puh, puh. Puh, 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 puh. All right, that was the metal pop filter. Let's hear that again with the nylon pop filter. Puh, 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 
Puh. And as you could expect, when the pop filter is touching the microphone, it really doesn't do anything at all. And it actually adds some rumble from the vibration of the two. The pop filter is gonna receive the air and filter it, but if there's no space for the air to, to actually dissipate, it's just gonna go right into the microphone. So we found in that example that there was actually some, some rumble, but it was important that there was an air gap there to actually allow the air to dissipate a bit and not transfer it directly into the microphone capsule. Personally, I found that the enclosure method really needed a thicker foam to really cut down on the plosive. So I really loved the big foam that comes with the SM7B. This, this really worked for cutting down on harsh plosives. But overall, I did find that both barrier methods were more effective in, in my opinion. I found that the metal filter was a bit more diffuse. Maybe that was because of the, the bigger holes or something like that. But I found that it, it, it really did break up that plosive, whereas the, the nylon one was more solid. It could just be the performance, but I found that the metal filter kind of softened the attack a bit, whereas the nylon filter still had that, that kind of punch and, uh, and solidarity to it. Overall, what did you think? What did you hear? What is your favorite pop filter? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to DistroKid for your continued support of the channel. And until next time, happy mixing. Maybe it's time I walk away Can't save you from